newsletter. So I'm looking at the newsletter here. We sent this is a hard copy newsletter which we send out um, in all of our orders. So you might get several of them. But I'm just going to go on the overhead camera, which um, is also a new setup. So hopefully this will work as well. So there's the um, this is the um, ghost instructions, which is a free instructions on the back of our newsletter. And I'm just going to turn it over because it might also be quite nice to see what we've got on um, this month. And of, of course, we're in October 2020. So as you probably know, our Makers box is out with a wolf and um, our Poppy Fairy. I've got the wolf here so you can have a proper look at that as one, one as well. Our Father Christmas has been launched and we've also got, I don't know if you can see it down here in the corner, we've got our Nativity um, our nativity is on a special discount and I'm just going to put a different screen up so you can see you can get 10% off on our on our nativity kit with the code nativity10 so all capital letters nativity10 and that um, lasts for as long as we're doing the um, the live streams I believe um, if that is wrong then you soon enough find out but if you're a member of our sub club so if you get our um, if you get our subscription box then you get 20% off and you know the code and um, so you can use that um, as well. So the other thing that's interesting on here is, and I will just um, mention that, is that um, Jane Emerson and, um, and the makers have ganged up together and uh, she's going to make this beautiful Robin on Zoom with those of you who want to, basically. You have to get your workshop pack and then you get a Zoom link sent as well. Absolutely love this. Such a simple but very effective, iconic little Robin that she has been making for the last 10 years. And so we're celebrating the 10th anniversary of Kirsty's Handmade Britain, even. Not just the Robin, but she was one of the first to appear with um, Kirsty also on on the um, handmade um, TV shows and so I'm really looking forward to doing this you can still get your Robin pack it's still time to get it because the workshop is not until the 10th um, no that's not true it's the 10th month and it's the 30th um, day so it's the 30th of October um, 2020 that, where the workshop is taking place so do get your workshop packs just get them we're going to have a really nice time and it's going to be Jane and myself we'll be in separate rooms but we'll be together on Zoom and um, it's a bit of a fun workshop, an evening out where you can allow yourself a glass of wine and um, a little bit of fun, basically. We do need it, right? We do need it. It's it's a tough old time again. So, right, let's start on, let's start on, um, I need to go on the overhead camera. Uh, I think it's that one, right. So, um, the, the the Zoom links uh, for the, for Jane's workshop, we will be posting out, we will be sending out, we don't post it, we send it out to you by email probably a week before and then we send it again probably a day before so that um, you, you've got it but then if you mislay it, you can have some more. Right, I'm taking some of this lovely, and actually in fact I'm taking putting the felting wool away so you can just see this lovely white wool. This is um, the um, Australian Merino uh, bleached white. Now in, if you've seen what you you need to make a ghost you will have been um, told on there that you can use the basic core wall or any standard core wall or any kind of core wall inside the ghost and the reason why we say that is not because it makes a better ghost it just means that you don't have to use so much of this nice bleached more expensive um, wool butt but I'm going to use just that so if you're making a long then you use your core wall unless you feel generous and you want to make your ghost out of all of this wool and I've got my pipe cleaner length here they come in 30 centimeters that's that's how we sell them and um, we now do packs of 100 as well so if you really want to stock up and um, then go from 25 to 100 and overall that makes them cheaper per piece as well and because I know th these extra strong pipe cleaners are extra strong in that they they don't flop they're not floppy pipe cleaners like some um, craft pipe pipe cleaners but they're not extra strong if you keep jiggling and wriggling them back and forth they do break and I will demonstrate that to you because I haven't got a pair of scissors right here in front with me so if you do this often enough you can break it in half which is great for when you want to break it and really not good if you don't want to break it so I've got my two halves one half is going to be the length of the body and the other half is going to be the arms. So the first thing I'm going to do is I show you now how to wrap wool around the pipe cleaner and for this you need to keep your wool really nice and wispy 
So these are the techniques that you're learning today, which is wrapping wool around pipe cleaner and um, or wire indeed. Um, and you you um, it's probably quite hard to see the white wool on top of a white pipe cleaner, but trust me, there is a nice a nice thin layer is building up here. And if you want to tuck away the sharp ends of the pipe cleaner, then you just bend this in now. And then you can go over this again with the wool. So you've got that bend is now covered in wool and the sharp end of the pipe cleaner is um, hidden away. And all I'm doing is I'm just covering sort of a good length of that pipe cleaner. But I, I want to have a middle bit here, just the pipe cleaner, because that's going to be bent around the body. And I'm just going over this um, a few times because I can already build up some bulk for the arms. and. You can see that I'm keeping the wool nice and flat and actually quite tight. And to get it tight, you have to work close to the pipe cleaner. So don't hold the wool right over here somewhere. Hold it really close to the pipe cleaner. I'll show you this again on the other side. So you take your strand of wool. It's nice to sort of tear wisps off um, that, that, that are sort of the fibers are running in a, in a similar direction. And then you can even tease it further apart by just gently pulling it. There's quite a lot of bounce in there before you um, tear the whole fiber off. And I'm going round again, just establishing the wispy bits that they get into the chenille there. And then I'm bending the ends in like that. And I keep going round and to tighten it, I do have to work quite close to my um, um, wrapping here because otherwise I'll just tear the wool apart. And this arm is obviously a little bit thinner, but that's okay. We can either leave it or I can already build on a little bit more by just taking a little bit more wool. So the as I said before, this really lovely bleached white wool it's one of our favorites, especially at this time of the year when you want to maybe um, imitate snow cover or um, it also works really well if you want to make really nice bright white mice. Um, if you do know our mouse tutorial, then you will know that um, I'm just going to change cameras for a minute. Then you will know that we also use a white um, Australian Merino for our mice, but it's the unbleached one. So if you want your mice to be a little bit brighter and whiter, then you can use the bleached white as well. Otherwise, we usually use this exact same wool, which is the Australian Merino wool bats. So it's an Australian Merino, which is kind of a little bit strange because with Australian Merino, you always think it's going to be in wool tops, but this has actually been turned into bats which of course everybody knows we love for 3D shaping because it felts down um, super quick and um, it um, it has nice and lofty. So when you stab the needle, the um, air comes out and you have a nice bulky shape rather than a flat, flat sort of pockmarked uh, appearance if you're using the wool tops for 3D needle felting. Right, I've got my set of arms here now. Um, they are like not quite the same size, but I really don't mind about that at all. And the next thing I'm going to do is, oh, I also should say, I nearly forgot. We've always got a competition, of course, during these live streams and also on the Thursday um, watch parties when when we all come together again and we re-watch re all of this. And, um, and the prize to be won today is one of our eight color rainbow packs. And here, here it is. This is how much you get in our eight color rainbow um, pack, which um, we currently retail at 10 pounds. So that's 10 pounds worth of wool and you get um, 10 grams of each color in there. So um, it's brilliant for making lovely colorful things. And I thought we all need a bit of rainbow in our lives at the moment again, because winter is coming and um, winter is often gray and dark and not the bright colors. Maybe in autumn you see some of these, but then it goes rapidly downhill. So we thought, let's put a bit of rainbow back in your life um, for as long as possible. And then when you run out of this, you can just stock up with some more. It's that easy to put color in your life. So um, that is up for grabs. And um, the, um, the way to win the competition is you have to um, tell us um, what wish if that was a genie in the bottle, what wish would you um, want to have fulfilled at this time of the year? What wish? What's your deepest heart desire 
doesn't have to be for you. It could be for somebody else. Maybe you've got somebody in your life who you um, need to um, make a wish for. So if that was not a ghost, not a spooky ghost, forget about Halloween. If that was a genie in the bottle, what would you ask your genie in the bottle to give to you or somebody else? One wish only. So um, make several comments if you like for all, for all we uh, mind. Just um, one wish. And of course, Emma is at the other end. Emma is the maker who's commenting on this live stream and she will be randomly picking a winner. This is, we, we don't judge people. We probably love everything that you say, but um, we'll just go like a really random pick. She'll write all the names down on the list and then just um, randomly pick a winner. And uh, whilst you are already having a think, I'm just going to have a quick checkup who is here today. Um, we've got quite a few of you watching. That's really lovely to see so many of you. So I'm just going to shout out a few names. There's quite a lot of chatter going on on these live streams. I tell you this now. So I'm always um, I'm always surprised how many people are watching. So we've, we've mentioned Donna and Fenny. We have got um, Jane is there and um, Tamsin is there and Natasha. Emily, Helen, and uh, Diane. There's probably a couple of Dianes. There usually are. Erica is there. Sandra. Faith is there. And Alicia is there. Um, yes, I think I, I don't know what went wrong. Don't don't hold me to it. But um, I am here now, and you found me. But I don't know if I if I went astray somewhere else because somebody whispered in my ear that that might have happened. So I do apologize. I've no idea what I've done wrong. Um, anyway, you're all here now, so that's the main thing. Uh, Rachel is there. Hello, Rachel. Um, oh, uh, Rachel has been trying to find me too. And and Daniel says hello. Excellent. Um, Yes, really, really, really sorry. I have no idea what happened there. So in any case, so many of you are here and um, I hope that um, you're all felting along. We've got as far as the arms, as you probably know. So let's um, continue with um, the body of this ghost as well. And I'm going to go small with the camera again. Okay, so you've got the other half of the pipe cleaner, which you put to one side when you've... Um, put that one, um, cut that one in half or broke it in half like I did. And now, because we want the head to be slightly shorter than the body, so you're going to fasten the arms onto that center pipe cleaner here by twisting the arms around the center pipe cleaner rather than the center pipe cleaner around the arms. So um, basically, and you're only doing this with one twist, so you're just turning um, one arm around don't worry if one arm is slightly longer than the other because it's a ghost, right? They change shape all the time. So it's um, it's totally okay to do this. And then the next thing that you're going to do is you use more of your, whether you're using the basic core wool or whether you're using all this lovely bleached white wool from the outset, you're going to do cover the ends of the pipe cleaner exactly like you did with the hands and you bend that in again, like that. <sighs> I've got to show you something else in a minute as well. I'm sitting here and what you can't see is that I've actually got a row of little hoggies looking at me. And I know that a lot of people think I'm completely mad, but I do talk to these um, little creatures and we haven't mentioned the hoggies for quite some time, but they're intently staring at what I'm doing here. And I'm just going to bring one in. Which one shall I bring in? Oh, let's bring little Huey in. He's He always looks a little bit sheepish. He's just sitting, he's just literally standing in front of um, on front of my make and he's looking very, yes, you can have a look. Come on then. It's a, it's a ghost. Look, he's as tall as you. Ha ha. Yes, so there you go. And of course, it is not too late to get your hoggy pack. We have got a handful left if you um, want to get your hoggy and just um, just to bring a couple more in. So um, there's his mum, that's Holly. No, that's Heather. And Holly is the sister, there she is. So you've got um, these three very patient hoggies who are desperately waiting for Homer Hoggy to come home. And um, and he is on his way. In fact, he is not very far now. But when you're only a little hedgehog with short legs, it takes a lot longer to travel a short distance. So he is definitely doing his best to get to get to his lovely family. And of course, Homer, who hasn't seen his family for a long, long time, here he is. In fact, he's um, working so hard to get to them that he he's stripped off and he's going with his bare top at the moment. And remember, you can make the whole family for Christmas. You can make them 
during Advent. And Advent is something that, uh, being German, we celebrate quite um, ferociously, if that is a word. No, we, we do get quite um, excited about Advent because it's the Sundays, the four Sundays before it's Christmas. So every Sunday, normally we have an Advent calendar and we light one candle. And then when all four candles are lit, the next time it is Christmas. So that sometimes that falls onto the same day or it's just a day or a couple of days later. And this year, um, the first of Advent is at the end of November. So we will be posting um, the Hoggy packs out way, way before that. Whether you're in the UK or somewhere abroad, you can get your Hoggy pack. So exciting. I am actually currently um, still putting the finishing touches on it. And, and with this Hoggy Special Christmas Edition pack, you get lots and lots of extra little surprises because at Christmas, it's all about giving and kindness and um, sharing and thinking of others. And we just want to, if you haven't got lots of people, um, either because you don't have them and you can spend Christmas with them, or maybe you won't be able to. Who knows? At least you've got a few Hoggies. And as far as I know, nobody's given yet um, a rule of six about hoggies. So you could be making 20. Let's be really rebellious and have 20 hoggies in your house and have a massive big party. Why ever not? So um, that's the way to do it. And of course, you can buy extra materials because you can buy the the basic hoggy pack that gives you the family of four plus all the extra surprises and presents in there. And then you can also add more materials. This is an option because they come, they come in the nude. Don't tell anybody, but you, you have to make clothes for them. And of course, we're supporting you throughout event every week with live streams where we help you to make the hoggies. Not that you need help because there is instructions in the pack as well, but it's for fun and just a little bit of togetherness. And then um, we're also going to help you make the clothes for the hoggies. And then you can also needle fur a Christmas tree and um, all kinds of other things. So anyway, that's um, that's I just love the hoggies. So. <clears throat> as you probably can tell. Let's get back to ghosts because we need some ghosts. Right, there is my um, ghost. I've just covered one part of the pipe cleaner at the top and now I'm going to do the same at the bottom as I did with the arms. You probably have this time overtaken me with this and that's absolutely fine. And again, I'm just covering the base. If at this point you feel that you've uh, put the arms too far up, you can still move them round. So you can still go a little bit lower because they're not fastened in too much. But from now on, what we're going to do is we're going to wrap the wool across the center as well, because that will establish more of the, um, that will just yeah keep them tighter in place. That's what I'm trying to say. And, um, and now you also don't need to be quite so tight with the wool because you want, we want to also do a little bit of needle felting, of course. Um, so I'm going to put wool around this a bit more generously. I'm going around the middle. The thickest parts that I will be um, having is um, is the, the, the face and the body. And then the arms and sort of the tail part, if that's what it's called, will be um, quite um, tapered. So I have to show you again the, the, what I'm aiming for. This is the finished um, shape. Don't worry too much about you don't have to bend it yet. It can also just be very straight. The other thing is I just noticed that if you want it to be slightly taller, you can also just needle felt extra onto the top or onto the bottom um, because um, the pipe cleaner could be way further inside. So um, as this is a little bit taller, as you can see, there is actually no pipe cleaner here in this very top. I've needle felted that um, a bit longer uh, as I was making the uh, as I was making him, whereas this one here is the exact size of the pipe cleaner. So there's a pipe cleaner right here in the top that can be bent and right here in the bottom that can be bent too. Right, so I'm just continuing wrapping the wool. At the moment we're still wrapping, but when you get to a point where you you feel you don't want to just build up bulk all the all the way around, that is when you start laying patches on. But um, and until we get to that, you're going to have to felt the wool down now. Now I will tell you straight away, you try and felt this down with a coarse needle. I will show it to you also just um, because sometimes people ask us, well, what needle do I use? This is a coarse needle, okay? And it, it really doesn't like it. It doesn't even, I can't even hear the crunchy noise. It just literally sort of bounces off the top. I'm not felting, it's just going nowhere. This is, you might as well use a knitting needle and stamp, try and stop that in. So you, um, you might, 
I want to go to um, a medium needle. However, sometimes the coarse needle is not um, like all coarse needles. So this one was just a, a basic triangular coarse needle. But if you had a twisted coarse needle, then it, it would work absolutely fine. And I happen to have our Mega Mix here, which um, we um, we sell one of each of one our, our each one of our needles, and there are eleven in total in this Mega Mix needle pack. If you ever want to try out all the needles that we sell, they're all color coded here. So I don't know if you can see that. Oh yes, quite good. And um, and we have a um, we have a um, an explanation sheet. That's not the word for it. Um, what is that called again? Anyway, um, like a schedule where all the colors are uh, explained, but they all they also um, if you buy them individually, they will it will always tell you on the tube, and with this tube you get a sheet as well. So I'm if I wanted to use a coarse um, twisted needle now, that one is one of them. And that one is another one. So this one is our cross star needle. So they have a slightly different audio. Look at this. I've got my um, ghost hooked on the reverse reversible needle. That's not good. Okay, let's start with the re reversible needle. If you've never used it, the reversible needle pulls the fiber out. So it's got the notches at the end of the needle pointing in the other direction. What I'm trying to show you is that sometimes you can use a coarse needle, which is the um, cross star and also the twisted um, coarse needle and it it you can actually get in because even though it is coarse which means it it has the same wire gauge because it's got a twist in the tip of the needle it kind of makes it slimmer it's a bit like um, a drill bit that, that sort of like fits in easier and the same with the cross star so the, um, the thing about this is that they're really efficient needles. So even though they're coarse, the same wire gauge as the one that I tried earlier. Um, I think I've put that one away. Oh, yes, I have. There's the coarse one. This one just bounces. It really doesn't felt. It sort of like literally pushes the fiber. Whereas um, this one is a coarse needle and it works beautifully. So that's just a little bit on needles. It's a very simple project, so you should get away with just one needle, to be honest. A medium needle will be absolutely fine. Um, this, especially if you're using a non-twisted or cross star needle. The, um, um, this wool, because it's so fine, it is, it, it doesn't like the coarse needles unless you're using a specialist coarse needle, as I've just explained. Okay, so um, I hope that you're all making your ghosty wishes or genie in a bottle wishes or whatever you want to call it. And um, I'm just going to try and have a quick look um, what you're all coming up with. Um, because, oh gosh, gosh, there's, lot, there's lots of it. And also I will be perfectly honest that um, I'm a little bit further away today from looking at the screen. So I'm having to really concentrate um, a lot on the reading. So I might just, I might not be able to read any of it, in fact. Uh, well, I'm sure that Emma and I mean you're all really commenting to each other here, so I don't I don't really need to say much. I I, I guess um, I'm gonna have to find a solution to so I can get the screen to be a little bit bigger, um, or see it a bit closer. Bye. Uh, I will just read face because I just it just catches my. Eye. I would wish for my own sheep that <laughs> had magic wool. <laughs> So okay, this feels like I'm in 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 reception year trying to um, read, and it's obviously it's literally I have to really really concentrate. Wool that grows in different colors. Um. Ah. Uh, okay, I'm not going to do this because I'm going to make myself look like a complete um um. Well, whatever. I don't want to say the word now. It's a bit rude. Um. So I'm stabbing my um, ghost. I don't know what you guys are doing, but hopefully you're stabbing yours too. The arms can be positioned. I'm just going to go a bit um, closer up again. Um, you you can um, next when you 
want to, you can already position the arms or just leave them for the time being. It's not so essential. I'm going to do another bit of wrapping because this could do with building layers up all over. So I'll just establish that. Um, when you when you wrap wool, it sometimes can appear that as if your ghost is mummified, which might be quite a nice appearance for a ghost for Halloween. But if um, if you don't like that look, then uh, you can always cover like a really thin dusting on top, and that will like literally cover up all the cracks and um, all the unsightful things. And remember, at some point you might have to go down a needle size. So I'm still using my specialist coarse needle which is the um, cross, um, the, the twisted cross needle. Um, and um, the reason why it's called a cross needle is because, it's not because it's angry. <laughs> it's an angry needle. Um, it's because it um, if you took a cross section of the needle, it has got a cross shape, um, like a cross, it's literally a cross shape um, cross section of the needle if you cut it like this and looked under a microscope or um, uh, magnifying glasses. And um, and then it also has got um, a twist. So it's it's got the it's got the two of the of the best things that make needles really efficient, which is the twist and it has got a specialist shape. So that's um that's why it's called um a um a cross um twisted needle. And we do sell them also separately. But once you start working with twisted needles, whatever shape they are, you will absolutely lo uh, love them um, because they they're just they're just, just very special, really really efficient. Um, a lot of our needles, in fact, most of our needles um, come from Germany, from uh, one of the highest quality needle manufacturers that we know and most people know. It's always referred to, and they're called. Um, um, called Spickert and um, we absolutely love them. They have really, really superior quality needles. If you if you sort of get a little bit into it, you will you can always tell whether you've got one of those or not. Right, so I'm just not that the other needles aren't uh, usable. They're absolutely fine. It's just when you get a bit of it, it's a bit more like a train spotterish thing when you get you you might never get to, get get to that. You don't have to be a train spotter for everything. Um, but if you do then you know what I'm talking about, right? So now I want to build up more bulk, say for example here. And to do this, I use my white wool and I'm going to um, make like a patch. So I'm doing like a, um, it's it's more of a um, padded, pa padded patch that I'm making, I'm laying this on top of each other. And, um, and then I'm smoothing that out and I put this where I want the, to build up the bulk. Can you see? So I can build up bulk quite quickly. And what I do first of all is I stab around the edges because I want to just um, make the fibers fuse into the existing shape. So I go around the edges and then I'm going to uh, felt it down all over. And sometimes you have to repeat that process. So because it looks quite bulky when you lay it on, but then when you stab it, uh, it, it shrinks down quite considerably. It looks a bit like a fish, this one at the moment. So that is how you build bulk up on parts of um, your ghost rather than always wrapping it and, and building equal bulk all around wherever you wrap. And um, by now, if you're still working with your core wool, by now you should start putting the bleached white on top of your core wool because and then and you will see once you've got the um, the bleached white next to your um, your core wool you can see also the difference of the color how yeah how much whiter this white wool is in, co in comparison to your um, natural white wool as it comes off the sheep after it's been even after it's been washed and even some some natural uh, wool is 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 more creamy than others so it depends on the different sheep breeds as well um if you want a very white natural um wool then our shetland is really really good for that it's one of the whitest natural wools that we have found and that we certainly that we stock um if you like that appearance of the sort of snowy look 
and you're not too worried if it's a little bit creamier it's not much creamier but just a little bit creamier then the um, Cape Merino is great for giving that sort of powdery look for snow absolutely love that one so all I'm doing is I'm just felting my um, ghost down all over remember that you've got a wire inside so don't stop too deep into the shape because you really really do not want to hit that wire full on it will inevitably uh, bend your needle and then when the needle is bent you might as well get rid of it because it does break remember to dispose of any broken needles safely we have a sharp spin where we put ours in and we, you really don't want to have bits of needle lying around somewhere or worse still have um, a broken off part in the bin and then somebody puts their hand in there. So that is the most responsible way of disposing your needles off. And um, you can um, take sharp, sharp bins to pharmacies and doctor surgeries and they just take them off you and they take care of them um, there. Right, so now I've got a ghost. And you can still um, change the arm position. Sometimes that quite is quite a good idea to change the arm position because then you can see whether you've got a bit of a, um, a gap there that you need to fill with more wool. He's got one arm longer than the other, but like I say, I don't care because um, ghosts, they are shape shifters, so they will, um, they will never be exactly symmetrical. Unless you really need yours to be absolutely symmetrical, then go for it. And um, I'll just stop here so that you can catch up um, if you're felting along. And um, I'll just tell you a little bit about some of our other um, products that we've still got in store for you um, that you already know of, but that you might have forgot. So basically, if you're still getting your Halloween decoration going, and I've seen some absolutely fabulous ones, if you are not already, then do join our Facebook group, Everyone a Maker, where most people share their makers' makes and um, yes, throughout the seasons and uh, whatever goes on, whether it is from a subscription box or from the from the free tutorials here or both or everything. Um, we love to see what you've made with our ideas, products, books, kits, um, accessories, materials, anything. So <clears throat> you can um, you can still make a witch. We've got a witch, a wizard, witch and wizard tutorial. So the witch and wizard, um, it's one tutorial where you can make one or the other. And um, you can also get your Witch and Wizard pack still. That pack has got everything in it to make two. One witch and one wizard, or two wizards and two witches. And you get the instructions as well. That is still, we've still got that for sale and it's still at the discounted price because we're very nearly at the, um, at the point of Halloween. So do get your uh, Witch and Wizard pack now because once Halloween is gone, we, we discontinue this um, until next year. So this is your last opportunity to get the last few that we have got left. If you haven't made your creepy crawly spider yet, then that is also a free tutorial um, on our, close your eyes now if you don't like spiders. I don't like spiders, I'm even holding one, but no, it's not real. Um, there is a tutorial to make a creepy crawly spider together with a broom, which I haven't got here at the moment. Um, but um, it's a witch's broom, so you can make a little broom. I wasn't referring to a big one so you can sweep your kitchen. I was referring to a tiny one for the witch to hold. And um, I love this witch, actually. She's I made her during the tutorial, and she's she's sort of she's a bit of a shy witch. I'm not quite sure what goes on under her hat there. I think she she might have definitely got a spider um, hidden in there. But I think I think she's quite nice. And also, if you want to make the witch with more intricate hands, this one doesn't have that one, then you can get your hand pack from us as well that makes hand very delicate and intricate fingered hands um, which you could use for people but also for animals and it comes in all kinds of different skin colors and we have got a free tutorial for that on our YouTube channel as well so you can still um, make all of that as well and then of course pumpkins never too late for pumpkins so you can make pumpkins that look like your pumpkins in the garden or you can make them with faces if you want to we do have a pumpkin tutorial for that one as well and the pumpkin packs again that's a seasonal product so it's available now and it makes um 
up to 30 mini pumpkins. So there's not a mini one, but a mini one is about the size of a tangerine, basically. It makes 30 of those, or you can scale them up, um, which is um, this amazing thing that you can do with needle felting. So this is this is your Halloween um, opportunity to go for it and make yourself a nice autumnal Halloween-y type decoration. And um, of course, lots of ghosts hanging everywhere. So that um, that might be a bit of fun to do. Now, if you need to buy sharp spins, um, I think we just bought ours online, to be honest, but you could check with uh, your uh, surgery or with your pharmacist. They might even sell them there. Um, it is definitely the kind of sharp spins that um, is used for medical uh, purpose. So that's um, the best I can suggest on that front. Okay, let's get back to our ghosts. Remember the competition for you to win your eight color um, um, eight color wool mix is um, to tell us if this ghost was a genie in a bottle, what would you wish for? What wish would you want to make? One wish from your genie in the bottle could be for yourself, could be for somebody else. And um, you've got another few minutes before we call the competition um, closed and then and then we announce the winner here today as well, as well as on Thursday, if you're watching at our watch party on Facebook on Thursday at 7 p.m. Right, let's make the ghost, let's finish the ghost. So here he is. Um, he's got no eyes at the moment, so now I'm going to show you how to make a face. Um, again, if you want to finish your ghost and make... I know some people love it when um, the finished look of their makes is, is really smooth and you can't see a single needle um, needle prick in there. I, I'm, I'm not that fussy, I will be perfectly honest, but you can also already now shape your ghost, so you can make the tail... Um, slightly um, bend. You can make the, the head slightly bend if you want to, and you can have the arms wherever you want them. I mean, they don't. They can be however you want them to be. I, I, there's just something very magical about the. I don't know what it is about the. It's almost the sort of thing you want to carry around in your hand all the time. Somebody should make hand ghosts or something like that. So the next thing you need is just a bit of black. So you have an option. You can make a very simple but very effective face by just needle felting three almost equal sized patches onto the face. Or you could um, could be a bit more ad adventurous with the eyes. So here I've just um, played around a bit with... Um, I, I tried to make um, a lipstick mouth, but it looks like a bat, like he's eating a bat, swallowed a bat, this, this one. Um, and, um, and, uh, and they're meant to be eyelashes, but they've become more like fluffy eyebrows. Um, so anyway, you can, you can, this is sort of the opposite extreme, or you could um, give them um, little gray eyes that will almost look a bit sort of watery. Um, and I will show you um, how to make certainly the simple one and probably this one as well. Right, so the, the simple one is literally just take a wisp of black like that and then you just, um, you don't even need to pre-shape it because this is, I love you doing this because it shows so, it, it demonstrates so beautifully what the needle actually does because as you're stabbing this consistently, always in the same spot, going, um, so because it's sort of like maybe um, a centimeter or 0.5 centimeters across, and diameter, if you just keep go doing this movement, going round and round, it magically, the fibers just disappear exactly into that space. And if you end up with a few black fibers, you can sort of twizzle them and then pu put them in. Sometimes you just have to pull the odd fiber out. So um, that, that you can do as well. And then you um, repeat this, obviously, on the other side. And because you're making a ghost, it really doesn't matter if the face is not symmetrical. I think it looks, um, again, you know, they sort of change change shape all the time. And um, and how do I know this? Well, I've seen lots of them, haven't you? Right, there you go. Um, and then you can give them, if you want to, just give them an open mouth. So this is just imitating, basically, that there are just holes there and it's black inside. So... Obviously, that therefore the black. So if it's slightly indentated, in indentated is that a word? Indented. Oh, I don't know what the word is, but you know what I'm talking about. If it's if if it's slightly set back from the white, then that that's even better because you want it to look like it's a hole, 
um, so the eyes and the the eyes and the mouth they they sit inside the white and um, and there you go that's a very that's the simplest face you can make now if you want to make um sorry i've got to turn him around now this seems a bit weird um but it is a ghost so it can't be spooky if you want to make gray um th then you just use a wisp of white like that and a wisp of the black by the way this is the dyed um new zealand merino black and um you lay these on top of each other it's really funny because somebody um, said, help, help, how, how, who can send me some gray quickly? And, and I just said, well, have you got white and black? And she said, yeah, I've got that. So just make your own. And she did. And, and it's actually one of the best colors you can mix. So I've got my, I've still got them separate, black and white. And then you just lay them on top of each other and keep pulling them apart until you will soon see that it, the black and the white turns into gray. And, um, and that is exactly, somebody told me, I don't know if that's true, but you know when people get gray hair, I, of course, would never get gray hair. Um, it is actually not the, the actual individual hair is gray. It's just that some of the hair are white and some of the hair are still dark. And therefore, it has the appearance of gray. I don't know if that is true. But there's definitely um, a gray color emerged magically here for our ghost. And then you for this one, you can make the... Um, I patch a little bit bigger. If the color is too dark or too light, then just add a little bit more of whichever color you want it to be more of in to it. And um, this one is a little bit darker than the one that I made earlier. There you go. You make a bigger eye patch there. You could also give them like a red mouth, maybe with a bit of blood running down. I don't know. Do, do ghosts, do they eat blood? Probably not but it'll be fun anyway. And um, so I'm making two big patches here of eyes. And if you do that, you've got a greater scope to sort of um, stylize the eyes a bit more because you can now put, you could put a white patch in there and then a black patch on top of it. So always going smaller. Um, and it, it kind of sort of, it looks a bit more haunted this this uh, ghost I guess so what you could do is if you wanted to you could add another white patch on on top of that again obviously it's got to be smaller um, like that and just keep stabbing the needle in the area where you want that um, patch to appear and if you need to add more add a bit more it's always best to work in small quantities because then you can add more. Once it's felted down, taking it off can be a bit of a pain at times because you might pull all kinds of other things off that you hadn't planned to pull off. So I'm, I'm putting a white patch inside the gray patch now there. And then you can put um, a little bit like a, almost like a black pupil inside of that white patch. So you've got almost like a three layered eye there now, there. That's it. There. There's the camera there. Or you can just put black inside, which is what I did here. Um, like I said, the, the gray wasn't quite so dark. And then you can give them eyebrows. Um, let's put a bit of black in there. You can make different eyes. You can give a, have a sleepy ghost, just give them eye slits. So this is just, this is now just the black on the gray. And this one has got white in it as well. So it's slightly different appearance. And then if you give them eyebrows so that um, if, you, if you point the eyebrows so they, they're slanting from the nose up to where you imagine the ear to be, they look angry. And if you do them like this, they sort of look more, I don't know, what's the word? More like um, um, mournful. Um, you can give them eyebrows really high up like that whatever not it's entirely up to you or don't give them eyebrows at all so let's make an angry one i haven't got an angry one here maybe stern one there this looks a bit more grim like that and um and then if you want to do a mouth uh, if you don't want to just have a, a round open um gap there with a with a black patch you could um you just use a bit of black. You can make a laughing 
um, ghost. I like I like this one because he doesn't look sort of he doesn't look quite sure of himself. He looks quite cute and um, lovely. Or you can make one that's like really angry, make an angry ghost. I wonder which one you are making, Danielle. You have to. Um, your mum has to let us know what you are up to there. So there's your um, your ghost, an angry one. Looks quite. I don't know, looks quite disgusted with what's going on. I don't blame you. And of course, like um, with all needle felting, you can always work on the areas that you thought you had finished because sometimes when you work on some other bits, you go back to the older bits as well again. So you can build up more bulk if you want to. Um, this one is a double-sided one. Why not make a double-sided one? That's quite fun as well. And um, that's basically the ghost. There, my double-sided ghost. He looks angry and he looks surprised and I don't know what he looks like, like he swallowed a bat and he's not so sure of himself. That one there, what's on this side? Oh, and I've got another one that's just a, um, like that. And then of course you can put a string on them and hang them up. Um, if you use a really fine string, then they look literally like they're suspended and they're all like, woo, going around in um, on your decoration. Or maybe you have a mobile, have a, a ghost mobile, and then if there's a slight draft or anything, then they are definitely dancing in, in the air. And um, I'm going to call the competition closed now. So for all of those of you who've got... Um, who've made a wish. If you are the lucky winner, then congratulations. I'll tell you in a minute who that is. But equally, maybe your wish will come true. Who knows? It's one you never know. You know, you've got to believe in these things. So I'm just going to have a quick look who is um, who is here still. Um, oh, lots of you. Um, oh, yes, I will also just say, while I'm reminded, that um, next week... I'm doing, I don't know what I'm doing next week. Emma, what am I doing next week? Give me a clue. I've completely forgotten what I'm doing next week. Um, I meant to look that up. Um, I, I have no idea what I'm doing next week. I don't know. We're starting the Nativity on the 27th of October, but there's one more in between, and I cannot for the life of me remember what that is. Oh, yes, but in the meantime, while Emma is um, um, looking that up for me, Ah, yes, that's right. We're doing peck dolls next week because we've got new peck dolls, new shapes. So some of you might not even know we sell peck dolls. It's actually one of our um, one of our best selling products. And um, we've, we we thought lots of people have asked, oh, do you do different shapes or do you do different sizes? And so we normally have like a, a roundish peck doll. I haven't got one here to show you. And now we're going to do, um, we have a triangular shape, like an angel shape. And we've also got a um, like a cylinder cylinder shape so um these are our new pack dolls and they come in different sizes and sophie um is making three kings for christmas obviously um and this is our subscription box for october so if you haven't got one yet but you want to make a howling wolf and i've been told there are two full moons in October. So this was utterly unplanned, but obviously meant to be. Um, the wolf, I've seen some really amazing, I've, I've, I've really seen some amazing um, wolves um, that you've posted on everyone a, a maker page on Facebook. And um, I, I just absolutely love how they come to life and they look like nothing like a wolf to start with, but this amazing wool mix just literally turns them into the howling wolf that they are and then you also get the background with um your subscription box and um i've seen some amazing backgrounds much much more sophisticated than mine with um yeah with a really nice sort of almost like I don't know if it was Hogwarts at the back or a castle with lit windows at the back or a scenery that somebody knows from somewhere or has seen in the in the as a silhouette um at their home. Absolutely amazing. So, oh yes, and there's one other thing I need to tell you about. Da -da 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 you might have spotted it. Um this is our new calendar. Our um, new calendar for a year that um, is full of hope and full of um, 
opportunities and full of newness and full of life and full of happiness and full of full of full of needle felted animals as well and um it's um we will i will have this up um obviously all the time now but as of next year the pages will change you have to wait until january before you see the different pages and i'm just gonna show you give you a, a quick insight so that's our um polar bear which is um going to be um a make along in january so there you have it and then we've got um this is one of our old subscription boxes the hair which is you can still buy this one um as a pack this one is one of our make alongs in feb in march so if you like chickens you can make if you yeah if you like stylized chickens i'm really excited by this she's um she's gonna she's the star that was also one of our um subscription boxes the sleepy fox is still available as a pack so is the so is the large fawn available as a pack if you've missed all of those this is still available as a pack i don't know for how much longer because we don't obviously keep keep everything as a pack because we we need to move into twice the size of a workshop um the dachshund trio is still available as a pack the sloths have only just finished they've just become available as a pack so you can buy them um as a pack now and when i say pack that means it's um without tools so it's a kit without tools basically the sea otters they are not yet a pack so you have to wait for that one unless you have the subscription box and then of course we're here in october that's the wolf and then november is the um everybody's looking forward to this it's the budget and the woodland subscription box and um i know what's in december it's not in here but um i i know what is in december and that, that is a, a curled up cat in a basket um sleeping cat and um of course december in this calendar for next year we've got the highland cow which is also available as a pack so there you go that's your quick preview you can order these calendars from us they are now ready to be shipped out because we've got them i'm gonna put this straight otherwise there and um it's very exciting that um we've got these for you to have hanging in your workspace maybe it's nice to give to a friend because they've never seen needle felted stuff before and you can say oh i've made this one and that one and that one and that one and that one in fact i've made all of them so um that's just a gift idea just a little stocking filler for yourself or somebody else and let's face it you can never have enough enough calendars in every room maybe maybe one in your kitchen maybe one in your study maybe one at work maybe one in the garage maybe one i don't know in the toilet in the bathroom anywhere 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 especially ours so um get those there's limited numbers as well because we only bought so many and um let's see your ghosts and oh yes and what i haven't said is who's won the eight color um or the rainbow color with eight colors um in the pack wool mix and that is maria maria k so congratulations maria you've won yourself this pack and of course on thursday this week it will be another name that um will be um mentioned not by me because i can't see in the future otherwise i would say it now but i'm just going to say hello to everybody on thursday even though i'm actually saying goodbye now so it was really lovely to have so many of you join me i hope you've um, enjoyed ma making your ghost i can't wait to see them all on um on every one maker remember to give this video your thumbs up subscribe to youtube our youtube channel tell your friends about it and let's get lots and lots of feedback let's get lots and lots of feeble needle pe pedal felting that's what i nearly said let's get lots and lots of people needle felting not not a uh, needle fe people felting okay i'm gonna shut up now and i will see you very soon <laughs> have a lovely week bye bye oh where's the flipping end screen oh there we are bye bye <laughs>